issue right. as well. Right. In, ter in terms so, of the budget we're going to have, it's right. I don't look at it as something that we have all this extra money to play around with. It's, yeah. it's the idea we don't want to we don't want to handicap ourselves for the coming year or handicap the community really um, by having a short yeah. short also, serve what the library can do. A look at how many people pay time and a half. So for Sunday hours, I think that needs to be looked at too, while you're doing this mass you mean the, server. In, yeah, if all the libraries are doing oh, that, oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's complicated. So, <laughs> so we're going to look at this, and Great. thank you. Uh, keep talking about and it. talk about it and come up with a plan. Um, Your research is probably cool. all of us would pick different hours if we were in charge, yeah. <laughs> and that's not going to happen. We're going to come up with good. some yeah. hours, exactly. even if it's yeah. you know a pilot project for a while. And, and as Dan points out, once the spring and summer starts, you know, you take them to the park. So, you know, we, which we already have a different set of hours for the summer. So we just want to think about this um, and put it on our radar and um, see where we come out. And I guess that's one, one other quick question. I'm sorry. Is there any, is there any number of complaints that when, when the, we do close at 5 o'clock on a Sunday over the summertime versus 9 o'clock? So I'm just curious if that, if that we get a feedback. No, that. I mean, uh, yeah. we do know that um, the usage dramatically drops after 7. I mean, the data oh, yeah, shows okay, so that, and yeah. it's consistent over time. So, mm -hmm. yeah, no, we don't have. So, so we're not going to get any, ne any negative feedback, okay. okay? I don't think so. Um, and if you shift hours, that doesn't have a cost impact. Sure. It's just a, a slight oh. shift. Right? Oh. Okay, with that, I, I, think, I, I think this is something the board would like to look at. And um, without any clear sense of where the conversation is going to go, but I think you know we want to look at these things. And if there's anything that the survey says is that a lot of different communities have a lot of different ideas as to what the hours should be. So um, there's no magic here with saying our hours should be thus and so, but a lot of different places have different ideas. So. With that, the director's Can report. And it's nine o'clock. <laughs> yeah. Five to five. So um, we did hire our new adult and teen services librarian, Krista. So this I gives, met her. Yeah, she's wonderful. So this gives you her background a little bit, which is very exciting. Um, we just posted for the uh, human resources specialist because Barb is going part-time starting in January. Mm -hmm. uh, I am working with the management association on that uh, to help get um, their insight into uh, qualifications of the candidates because mm -hmm. HR is a specific skill set that we need. You know, I figure the HR mm -hmm. professionals could help with that. So, mm -hmm. and that, did um, you get a chance to investigate whether sharing with a coterminous local government might make sense? Um, I have not investigated that. I know you guys discussed it at a meeting very briefly, but I haven't. We, we need somebody full time, so I'm not mm -hmm. sure where the extra. Um, how we could share if we need somebody full time. It's just, yeah, I mean, there's there's different needs that a library has as a standalone district in that sense. Um, the other taxing bodies already have HR. That's another issue. Um, what you are you know. recommending? I mean, to me, HR is HR, and I, I can't imagine there's a significant difference between HR for a park district and a library. You know, they're all just people. So, I, I, to me, it would just be to me, it'd be worth thinking about whether we can piggyback off of the infrastructure we have instead of doing another full-time position. Um, That's all. Well, I am. Uh, you know, I respond to board uh, desire on what we want to do with that. It, as a collective body what you want to do but my perspective is is that benefits administration is fairly consistent HR wise but that's only a very small part of what an HR professional does um, a lot of what they do is they work with individual staff on coaching and helping them through personnel crises and working with managers to um, help them up their management skills and that is a very specific skill that you you want to be embedded in an institution to do. You want to be able to build a, a very strong 
working relationship with people to help them in that way. Uh, the other issue is training. Um, I thought briefly about HR as a part-time job, which a part-time job would totally cover all the benefits administration part, all the paperwork part, but it doesn't do anything for the massive amount of staff training and staff development that we still need. A good example is the safety training that you were talking about. Yeah, we should have safety training every year, uh, and we should make sure that all the staff oh, is tracked and gets safety training and that we know what they need and we can respond to that. An HR professional can help with that. They can help build job descriptions. Um, I'm sorry, Lisa, what was your... One of the things I'd asked last meeting was, because I, I keep seeing additions, as to what is the overall employee plan in terms of what, what are you looking at in terms of adding FTEs mm -hmm. and whatever, because when we keep getting that piecemeal, while we're not to micromanage, I would like to see what the overall plan is looking at the next two years as to who you think might be leaving and what you're doing. Because when I get it piecemeal, it's hard for me to grasp. Yeah. Get the, well, I don't have things. an overall plan with this because uh, I didn't expect Barb to go part time. But no, but, but I mean, <laughs> you know, but, I mean, but, I, mean like... but I understand that. But if you yeah. have her part time, you're doing a time, you're replacing with one and a half versus one. And right. I'm just curious. And then if I'm looking at, you're adding, uh, you've just added two more people, one, and, and I just want to see the whole plan. Right. I, I just, I don't. I, My recollection Krista replaced in, Stephen, actually. Uh -huh. So that, I mean, a lot of these are like, well, but either. Stephen, but then Stephen, but Stephen moved up. So yes. I need but to we were see told this at the finance committee meeting last. In May. In May. We yes. were told there's going to be a computer person, mm -hmm. and that turned out to be Stephen. Yes. It could have been from outside, but it wasn't. It was from internal, so then you replace him. We were told that there was going to be a teen services person. Um, so those two, and we were told that there was going to be... Youth services. Youth, um, the graphic designer person yeah. and communications sort of planning things. One of the things that's sort of interesting, and I had some conversations with um, Heather on this issue with respect to programming, is, you know, our circulation is great, but one of the areas where we actually are not stellar is programming um, that and programs and stuff. And it's an area where, you know, we've always hit, you know, we've been renovating for so long that our space was not very available. And it is an area that I think that we, is very popular with people. It's really very well regarded. And it's something that clearly needed, in my opinion, you know, ramping up, and that's sort of what the community. I understand that, Kathleen, but I still think I want the total. Yeah, we want to see a chart. <laughs> I want to see a chart, and I think that's fair to ask. I'm not like. Oh, of course, of course. I mean, we have, of yeah. but part of it is at. the yeah. org chart. I mean, the HR is a good example of that. I didn't plan on mm -hmm. <laughs> because I didn't know that this was going to happen. And part of it is succession planning as a whole. Um, when I first started, Ellen can't told me that there was going to be a lot of retirements. And right. just we have a very veteran workforce, which is But awesome. if you replace an equal with equal, that's fine. But it's when you're doing that uh, uh, plus one or plus year. That's all I'm asking for. I can understand yeah, and when someone sure leaves that we have you replacing the money with to that. Go forward to accommodate those hires. When you're bringing in an entirely, like two entirely new positions, I would say like the graphic designer and the, the um, basically events planning programming person, those sound like new, they might not be new functions, but they sound like new um, full-time employees to me. They're, they're new jobs. Sure. Uh, so they're in addition, so it would seem to me that, that therefore there's an increase in personnel costs, right? Yeah, and, and that's, that, that's... I hope that you've taken that into account in the budget. I absolutely did. Yeah. That's what, um, like Kathleen said, that's, we talked a long time at the finance right. committee about that right. because um, it, you approved the personnel costs and I, I tried right. to explain that we're in a growth mode right. and that we are trying to add some positions in particular right. key areas. Um, I, I identified the key areas. I didn't identify the specific positions at the okay. time because I, it wasn't as clear to me this how right. what specific position we needed um, until I was able to talk to staff and analyze it according to um, right. what was happening and what 
what staff wanted to do but wasn't able to do right. because of, of staffing issues. So yeah, I, I have been trying to analyze right. that. Um, but the, um, the graphic design is a part-time position. Mm -hmm. the, um, the creative programming position, I, um, I, I, I tried to explain in my director's report last month, you mm -hmm. know, what, what I was envisioning that position would do. Mm -hmm. A lot of it with community services is that when I came in, it was a department of one. Right. <laughs> and the goal, my understanding is that the board was hoping we would do more community engagement and that you wanted more partnering and you wanted more um, communication with the community and we wanted the ability to advocate and, and market our services in new ways. In integrate, All, integrate into the community more. Than in, right, yeah, embedded into yeah, the community. Yeah, well, then they will do so. um, you know, the book bite plays into that. Yeah, yeah. I'm still picking yeah. Which we, yeah, yeah. It, it is here. Okay. But, You're not saying it. No, I understand yeah. that. So, no, but, you want the big picture, right? That's, that's, that's the big, the big yeah, picture. Yeah. Is, I guess makes perfect sense. Uh, that I is the big it. picture, is to, to increase community services, yeah. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it, I guess that's... In addition to the chart, maybe a good idea is... After we'll the first of the year, is bring the department in mm -hmm. and have them talk to us. Because what All is Sarah people. Beth doing differently? That yeah. would be my key question. Well, because she was doing three well, people's know, jobs. But you before. before that, no, because you had one person that was doing that same thing, the same amount of work before Sarah Beth was hired. No, I'm, and I'm serious. So that's what I want to know. What is she doing differently? Yeah, um, well, she wasn't doing the same amount of work. The amount of marketing um, required now has. Uh, increased yeah. mm -hmm. uh, tenfold in terms of what was happening even two or three years ago. The social media management, the, right. the, the newsletter itself. They're not managing social media. Or maybe well, what they should do, well, because there's, there's here's additional, the, the communications new, committee. Maybe, maybe if the communications yeah. committee yeah. after the first of the year but had a meeting and, and sat they, down with the communications staff and any other people on the board, rather than doing it a board meeting, sat down and so they let them do a presentation with the... Okay. Well, I do need to know... I mean, I guess I, I, tr I tried to give you the, the vision part, uh, but mm -hmm. it is an operational question as well in terms of we are in the middle of hiring, so if you want me to put the brakes on, I need to know. I want to see what the plan is. That's all I've asked for, and I think that's fair. Well, these three people have been hired. No, no, no. I, I just want an overall yeah. plan. Right. You're not, not objective to the hires. That, yeah, you just I, want to see, what's how, the, see how they expanded. The expanded. Right. What that expansion is going to get. Yeah. Well, and that's, that is absolutely, Lisa, a really great... Um, Argument for an HR professional, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> but because given that we, I understand because given we, that we need don't. job descriptions. We okay. need a, a new org chart. We need a lot of the um, the intricacies of HR um, mm -hmm. because so many of our job descriptions um, are many, many years old, and people's mm -hmm. jobs. I, part of it is I've tried to adapt a new title or a new job based upon what people are actually doing, not necessarily what they were originally hired to do because jobs have evolved over time. Mm -hmm. But their right. job description hasn't necessarily. Like, you know, reference librarians do a lot more programming than they used to, for example. Well, let me have yeah. a question. Um, yeah. Maybe it would help if we had a committee meeting with the communications people mm -hmm. after the first of the year, have the communications staff meet uh, and maybe, and, and actually time it so that you'll have the job description, the management report also ready with the grazing, and sort of sit and discuss all of these issues, but in a committee format so we can sort of get a little bit, you know, increase everybody's sure. comfort level mm -hmm. on what's going on. Um, mm -hmm. I think, that and, and to the, I think that's a part of the problem. I am thinking <laughs> like uh, we can't. Barbara's only going to be here three days a week, <laughs> right, right. starting January first. I don't think we can delay hiring somebody to deal with HR. But um, it, 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 on that point, just my own. You want you want us to hire? See, you but want here, us to talk to the village or the park here, district and see if they have extra time on their well, employees. Look, there are two, and then I'll, I'll close on this. 
I think we should all be uncomfortable about adding full-time positions or have eyes wide open because it's a permanent part of the budget, right? What I understand is that the traditional HR, real easy to fill on the part-time basis. But there's library-specific training work, which is valuable and legitimate, that uh, there's a need for. It strikes me that there are certainly lots of people that do that at neighboring libraries. And before we commit in perpetuity to a full-time position, I think it would be prudent, perhaps the board agrees, that we fully explore whether the basic HR functions, maybe Barbara could continue to do it, and the enhanced library services, maybe we can do something creative and avoid adding another full-time position in administration for perpetuity by partnering with Winnetka or partnering with Evanston on the library-specific functions. It's, That's all. But it's not perpetuity, by the way. We, 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 can, we can always create a position and we can always eliminate the position. So we're We getting, could fire some. Yeah, it's harder it's, it's, to eliminate, though. But, it's, but, it, but even <laughs> so. But in I, practice. This, this but but from my experience of running a business yeah. Yeah. and knowing the size of the library staff, yeah. to have a, and based on what the library is all about, it, there certainly is, Heather's already pointed out, a very strong reason to have a full-time HR mm -hmm. person because of because you want to have someone who understands the dynamic, what the purpose of the library, how the library serves the community. And you can certainly have right. someone who's sharing with Winnetka or, or the Park District or something else. But then you have someone who's got split agendas. 